Good afternoon, everyone. I thank AIOS for this opportunity. Today, I'll be talking about current practices in dry eye management. Uh, specifically, I will be mentioning what we all can do in our own clinics so that because um, COVID uh, pandemic has given us a lot of patients coming with dryness and it is no more specific to IT professionals. Now, even children and old patients are coming with similar complaints. So by the end of this talk, my aim is that we have a summary of what we can do in our clinic to even without uh, in the hi-fi instruments and uh, then how we can treat these patients. I have no financial interests in uh, any of the products which I mentioned. So why the problem? The problem is uh, because of the pandemic that we all are, not we all, but everyone else is working from home and using the system a lot. And uh, now they claim that uh, in India, it is estimated that 60% of Indian urban population will be affected with dry eye disease by the year of 2030. And uh, this is not a small problem because we are prescribing medicines to the patients and it is a big economic load for the patient. And apart from that intermittent blurring, burning, all this is affecting their um, effectivity in their work. So it is to be taken seriously. But when they come to us, we just cannot give them lubricants and send them off. So we should know what are we going to treat the aqueous layers as we know the basics, but still each one of this has to be treated in a different manner. Uh, now what we see is initially we'll start with the lipid layer, examination of the meibomian gland function, what all we can do in our clinics. So nowadays there are studies uh, saying that we can quantify and uh, we can give the quality, we can grade the quality of the mebum which is secreted from the mebomian glands. So the grade zero is when there is clear mebum coming out of the glands. Grade one is cloudy fluid. Gra uh, grade uh, two is cloudy but particulate. And grade three is toothpaste-like secretions which is very commonly seen nowadays in our clinics. And then the expressibility. The expressibility is seen from the central part of the lower lid. And uh, we normally take the first, uh, the central five uh, openings of the meibomian gland. And then grade zero is when all of them are well expressed. Grade one is when only central three or four glands uh, openings are expressed. Grade two is one or two of them expressed. And grade three is none of them. That means all of them are blocked. Third is the mebography. Mebography nowadays we get uh, we have um, machines which uh, give us mebography, but uh, traditionally we can also if suppose we don't have a, a machine in our setting, we can use the auto refractometer which has infrared light and we can turn the lid and see how many uh, glands are present and what is the structure of these glands. So auto refractometer also can be used and we need not depend on uh, these. Machines. Machines. So mebography is uh, giving us a mebo score wherein grade zero is there is no gland loss. We can see in the first picture very uh, and also one thing to mention here is uh, we also see the upper lid not only the lower lid both the lids have to be averted and seen. So grade zero is there is no gland loss. Grade one is 30, up to 33% of gland, uh, gland loss. Grade two is up to 66% and more than that is grade four. Now why why this theoretical uh, grading is important because dry eye patients are not one-time patients they are going to come to us uh, every few months so we need to note this in our notes and then follow up with this uh, as reference as to the treatment is working or not we will also know whether the patient is compliant or not okay so we need to grade these in our regular practice so that it helps our management in the patients Second thing is the tear breakup time. We are already aware of the fluorescein breakup time. Nowadays, we have the non-invasive breakup time, wherein uh, it calculates the time between a complete blink and then after that, when is the first uh, dry spot appearing on the um, cornea. So this is nothing different from what we do in the uh, on the slit lamp with fluorescein uh, this thing. But then it is all uh, this one is more repeatable because it is done 
run by a machine. And any of the tests which I will be talking about um, uh, now onwards or even the previous ones, it is always better and it is advised in most of the studies that we take at least three readings and then take an average of them because any one reading is never repeatable. Even in the uh, with the same observer, this may not be repeatable. So here we see a uh, NIBUT where uh, the, okay, my cursor is not seen there. So uh, that uh, that green map is the topography of the uh, tear film, wherein the yellow and the red patches are the uh, dry spots which have appeared. And the uh, written content at the side, it will tell us how many seconds it took for the first spot to appear. And the fluorescein uh, breakup time, we all are doing this since ages. One point I would like to add in this is I never cared about what uh, medicine or what drops I'm using to wet the fluorescein strip. But uh, if we use uh, proparacaine, then it disturbs the tear film layer. And if we use a lubricant, it will make it better. So our, um, our reading will be faulty here. So uh, one of the cornea meets which I have attended, they have such suggested the, that we use a um, what do you call it, preservative free uh, moxifloxacin eye drops which will not affect the layer and we get reliable readings here and therefore we also take three readings and then take an average. This was about meibomian gland dysfunction, uh, which we can do in our clinics without anything. We can um, do with whatever is easily available. Ex now we see the lacrimal gland dysfunction, wherein we all know about Schirmer's test, but still I will touch upon it. Second is the tear meniscometry, and the third is the direct assessment of tear secretion. Now this was something new which I got uh, while making this presentation. I'll talk about it. Now coming to Schirmer's test, all this traditional teaching is there that Schirmer's one is reflex plus basal. That means we are doing it with uh, so we have a lot of uh, doctors to go. So you yeah. have to finish in one minute. Finish it off. Okay, so this one is a direct assessment of uh, tear secretion wherein we are elevating the upper lid, the lateral part of the upper lid and uh, we can see some the arrows are showing the openings of the tear, the palpebral gland of the um, like uh, pal palpebral lobe of the lacrimal gland this is in short about the treatment that is the tear substitutes but it is not always about lubrication we have to take care of the inflammation of the um, surface therefore we have some anti-inflammatory drugs steroids are there we use it as first um, first hand drugs but then we cannot use it for long and therefore cyclosporin and tacrolimus comes to aid uh, when we have to withdraw steroids and there are some sec uh, secretogogues but all these are under studies nowadays and also in severe cases we can give autologous serum of scleral contact lenses and punctal occlusions MGD treatment lifestyle changes gland expression uh, we, we can do in the uh, clinic itself uh, light and heat therapy which is IPL and lipi flow nowadays and uh, some medications I will just wrap this so as a take home, we can just sum it up in this. So what is the sequence of things which we can do? If we do Sharma's first hour, TBUT will be affected or, or vice versa. So first is we take a good history. We have some questionnaires like OSTI questionnaire. Second is we see the tear meniscus height on the slit lamp. And then we go for fluorescein staining of the cornea and conjunctiva. For conjunctiva, I would recommend uh, uh, not to do uh, fluorescein, sorry not to do fluorescein. We have the rose bengal, uh, which is much better for conjunctival uh, staining. Then we do the Sherman's test. Next, we will see the lid features and the mebum expressibility and quality. After that, check for the mebomian dropout, wherein we have to uh, evert the lids. We do not touch the lids until we do Sherman's T-BAT and all the other uh, uh, examinations. And then last is the palpebral lobe of the lacrimal gland. Thank you. A very very good talk and I had a lot to is, talk <laughs> yeah so it would have been very nice uh, yeah. had we had uh, more time yeah. so one more last uh, one thing to ask mm -hmm. uh, do you use this uh, uh, check the osmolar uh, molarity no ma'am in our practice we are not doing it right now and therefore I did not mention much about it yeah. uh, and most of us may not be able to do it in our uh, setups so my aim was to do uh, to prepare a Basic. talk for all of us which we can do as the patient number 
is increasing day by day right thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am thanks for the wonderful talk.